What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's me again, back with another generational curse breaking video. And, you know, this evening I just wanted to come on here and just give a life update as far as, you know, what's what's going on with me, where I'm at with everything. And, um, you know, just processing some thoughts with y'all. And I appreciate Everybody that's been following my journey, um, all the support that me and my husband's been getting from y'all, uh, we greatly appreciate it. We don't take anything for granted. So uh, we just appreciate the uplifting and the, you know, the positivity. So just thank you. Thank you to all the supporters. We appreciate y'all for following our journey. And um, so, yeah, let me go ahead and get into it. Like, okay. So, first thing first, how I'm feeling right now in this present moment. Um, you know, right now, what tonight is just one of those nights where um, I've just been doing a whole lot of thinking, um, just bracing thoughts, a lot of reflecting. And the best thing for me to do when I get like this is to, you know, breathe first <laughs> you know what i'm saying just like take deep breaths and uh just kind of like meditate kind of relax my relax myself but it always helps to talk about it to communicate you know my major is communications i'm going to fau right now and um you know that's really what's been helping me get through this it's just the ability to be able to communicate um and to have a you know, to have a platform to do it on, but especially with my husband. And then, you know, being able to share it with you guys, share it with the world. So, yeah, right now I just, you know, I'm in a space where I kind of feel like talking about um, how I'm feeling and just the progress with everything. Um, I am going to go see a psychiatrist this week. Um, psychiatrist that specializes in you know trying to help healing of childhood trauma um, so definitely um, moving forward I feel in the right direction as far as getting the help that you know I'm saying that I desperately needed and still need so um, got an appointment this week with the psychiatrist specializing in childhood trauma um oh i'm also i've been reaching out you know to some of the people uh who live in havana that might have went to school with my mom um definitely trying to you know just genuinely get to know the person that my mom was um outside of just looking from the lenses of a child. You know, I, I want to know what other people's experiences with my mom was, especially like um, my husband, he brought up a good point. He was like, you know, people who went to school with you, they really, really, they really know you like the best for real. Like they know your character because they were with you, like, you know, day in and day out. Um, So... I've been reaching out to some of uh, the people in Havana, Florida, who possibly have went to school with my mom or could find people that went to school with her. Um, it's kind of difficult because it, it was a really small school and um, something happened, I don't know, some years back in the transfer of the records for the school. And so they've been you know trying to work diligently trying to get the records back for the school um what else um reaching out to my mom's peoples yeah i just think that it's also good to uh get you know um get an understanding of my mom outside of family, you know, because just with everything that's going on, you know, sometimes family can be biased 
when talking about other family members. So, you know, I feel like it's always, and it's a good thing to get a different perspective outside of family members. So that's why I'm reaching out to some of her friends. Um, um, a lot of y'all might know that I had a baby. Um, he's two months. Um, so I definitely been, you know, experiencing being a new mom all over again and just, um, you know, really nurturing my son and making sure that he gets that early uh, childhood love and development and, you know, growth that he needs. So, um, been heavy in the paint with my son. Uh, team no sleep. <laughs> I'm up all night. You feel me? So been up for 40 days and 40 nights <laughs> with my son. It's two months. So, you know, all the mamas out there, I know y'all know what that's like uh, having a, a new baby in the home. So that's where most of my attention really has been going to. Uh, him, my children, my husband, um, and then school, and, um, you know, the therapy, and just trying to get a better understanding of who my mom was, and that's what my life has been consistent of. Um, it's so funny because being that both sides of my family are from Florida, um, a lot of people know both sides of my family. Like, it's just deep when, you know, both sides of your family are from the same place. Um, especially when it's such a small town. So, what do I, know, what do, what do I want to talk about? Um, you know, I'm really like looking forward to getting the therapy that I need, but I'm also like kind of nervous because I know that I'm going to like really have to probably go back down memory lane. I know it's going to be intense and I'm kind of nervous about that. Um, but I don't know. I'm willing. I'm willing to go through it. I really don't know what to expect, but I'm praying for a positive outcome from everything. So this has been really long overdue. You know, going to see the psychiatrist and, and getting the childhood trauma help. But, yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Like, you know, a lot of people have been through the same thing that I've been through as far as, you know, molestation goes. And it's a very sensitive subject. And um, I'm, I don't judge anybody who's handled their situation the way they felt like they needed to handle, you know? Um, this is just the way that I know how to deal with what I went through. Um, you know, when I think back to what happened, um, I can't help but to like go back to that, you know, three-year-old little girl and how I felt in that moment. And I remember I told my husband, I said, when it was happening, um, you know, I was such, I was at a such a young age. Um, the only thing I knew to do was to talk to God. <laughs> you know, I think that, um, I think that was the first fervent prayer that I ever had with God. I think I was like three years old. And when I was going through what I was going through, I'm like, you know, you know, God, what's up with this? 
Like, that's exactly how I was talking. <laughs> and uh, in my mind. And, um, you know, I was just like, you know, what's going on? Like, you know, questioning God, asking God what was going on at that moment. And, you know, I don't know, like, the response I felt that I got from from God was, you know, just trust me, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Just trust me, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And um, I think that's when I really first established a real relationship with the Most High was at that moment. That's why it's so, it's such a, um, you know, pivotal and, and critical moment because, you know, at that time, the only thing that I could think of was to talk to God. And, um, You know, just anybody out there that's ever experienced anything like this, just know that I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Um, and no, I'm not a victim. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, you know, I feel a little victorious and a little brave and a little courageous. Um, that God used me to be able to share my experience uh, to possibly help somebody else in the midst of it, you know, somebody else that might be struggling uh, with this very same thing and um, encourage them to maybe go get some therapy or to be able to communicate with somebody that they can confide in because you know it's important to have an outlet to be able to talk to somebody that you can trust about the situation. Um, you know, when that happened, uh, especially, I guess, you know, him being in law enforcement and, you know, me being a child, uh, me feeling powerless, you know, from that moment on, I always felt like I was in fight or flight or whatever mode, you know what I'm saying, survival mode, like, you know, that moment made my whole life change as far as, you know, the security um, that I once had, but yeah, like, you know, I don't want to get in too deep with that. You know, I just figured I share that with y'all because that was a real moment. Um, and you know, I don't, I can't say that, um, you know, I would have to say that as ugly as it was and as it is, you know, it's contributed to the person that I am today. So, you know, that's just something that I had to, I had to accept. Um, what else? Life update. Hmm. You know, with my racing thoughts and stuff, you know, I have a lot of questions for my dad. <clears throat> Especially being that, you know, he's the only living parent that I have and I can't really ask my mom the questions that I want to ask her. You know, I have a lot of questions that I wish, um, honesty could be a factor, you know? Like, I 
I remember the last time, the last conversation I had with my dad, I told him, I said, um, I said, uh, do you remember the story about the little girl who found a snake and she, uh, I think the snake was hurt or injured or something and she got the snake and nurtured the snake back to health and helped the snake and, um, you know, one day she went to pick the snake up and the snake bit her. And she looked at the snake and she said, why, why'd you bite me? You feel me? I did everything for you. Like, why would you do that to me? And the snake said, you knew I was a snake when you picked me up. And I told him, I said, Dad, like, you know, ever since that situation happened, I kind of felt like, I've kind of felt like, um, you know, like, I never wanted to be that little girl. Like, I never wanted to be snaked and get bit. Um, so, you know, basically all the way up to this point, I have felt like I've always lived my life, like, looking behind my shoulder or with one eye open or, you know, just... in fear and that's a horrible way to live so I'm saying all that to say that this process has not been easy you know, and I think, sir, I think some people, you know, might feel like maybe I get some type of joy from this, or um, maybe it's coming from a place of hate, but that's not even what it is. What it is, is, um, the fact that you know the fact that I can't afford to remain silent anymore you know like I said on the last video me being silent about the situation has damn near you know damn near took me out for real like you know, right before I got married, like, I felt like I was in the process of, you know, having a nervous breakdown or something. Feeling like I can't trust nobody. Like, I have a hard time trusting. Like, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, like, how hard it is for me to trust people. You know, like, a lot of times I feel like you know, when I'm around people or just like, you know, just finding out what I know now, it feels like I've been around human snakes. You know, it feels like I've been around snakes in human form. Like, I'm just waiting on, I'm just waiting on it, <laughs> basically. You know? It's like when my family, like they're fighting so hard for position and power and money that they're willing to do whatever it takes. And for me, you know, like, I feel like, you know, who knows? Like, you know, maybe we living in Revelation. I don't even know. But that's not the time I'm on right now. I'm not on Demon Time, for real. And I feel like they've been op used to operating the way that they've been operating for so long that they feel like ain't no turning back. Like, whatever mission they were on, they have to complete it. 
in order to gain status or position or power. And like, you know, excuse my language, but you know, that's where they got me fucked up. Because last time I checked, like, It wasn't a bad, it's not a bad thing to have morals and values and integrity and to actually care about people um, and not things. Like, I don't feel like that's a bad thing. I don't think um, it's a bad thing that I don't want to live in secrecy and in lies, you know? And I don't want to be affected by anybody else's secrets and lies. Like, straight up. And here's the thing. You know. Let's say they did do something to my mom. How would I ever be able to trust that? Ever again. Better yet. How have I been around these people for so long? You know, and it's like when I think back on, you know, the way certain people have acted in my life and stuff, like, it makes sense. So, I don't know, you know, if any of this is making sense or resonating to anybody, but I'm just on here expressing how I feel, having dialogue, communicating my thoughts. Uh, it's healthy for me. It's therapeutic. And maybe it might help somebody else. So, you know, that's my life update. That's how I'm feeling. I feel like I can't trust nobody. I feel like the only person I can trust is my husband. I feel like, um, you know, people be out here on real life, live missions and shit, you know, and agendas, like hidden agendas. You know, I feel like my truth is affecting other people's, uh, missions and lives you know but at the end of the day you know that's none of my business but what is my business is making sure that you know my family is protected making sure that my family is safe, making sure that um, I'm not around people that wanna hurt me or harm me because they might not like my truth or they might disagree with the way I'm going about it. But like I said on another video, what other way was I supposed to go about it? Like, I can't, you know, I don't know. When you tell people what happened to you and they just ignore it and dismiss it and, you know, try to make it seem like uh, you're crazy and this and that or whatever, it's like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Let me get on here and let me clear the record. And if you really want to know how I feel, this is how I feel. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to speculate on how I feel. You know exactly where I'm coming from. So right now, you know, I'm just feeling like, um, I'm really just feeling like, you know, until I get the therapy, the proper therapy and help that I need, like, I don't really want to be around a lot of different energies outside of my household. I really don't. I just don't. I 
I don't know. I feel like if I feel like I'm at a place where I really don't trust anybody, you know, but my husband. And, you know, I do I do have some other people, you know. I do. I do have some other people that, you know, if I really wanted to, you know, call and talk to them or whatever, I know that I could. Um, but outside of that, like, really no new friends. You know what I'm saying? No visits. I'm not interested in coming to nobody's house. You know, because at the end of the day, like, people have been holding on to the belt loops of these, you know, people in power for so long that a lot of them have been compromised. And, you know, if they can't reach you, you know, like, send you a cease or desist or... If they can't, um, you know, have any reach or communication with you, then, you know, they work like snakes and they send other people to work for them. You know, this is the shit that I've been dealing with. And I'm just kind of tired of it. I cannot heal and carry out my, you know, daily activity of living and worry about snakes at the same time. Like, that's not going to work, you know. So, that's that's where I'm at right now. Like, I'm really on, on healing time. You know what I'm saying? Like, real, real, real family time. Like, um... Yeah. On righteous time. So, you know, right now, with me delivering these videos, putting these videos out, I really can't afford to worry about how other people feel. Um, especially when, you know, my feelings obviously have been dismissed for a very long time. So, you know, hence they put the narrative on me as being crazy. You know, and by the way, you know, it's it's really, really immoral to call somebody crazy who might have a mental, you know, condition. So... That's not a wise thing to keep doing is to call somebody crazy when they might have PTSD or they might have anxiety disorder or they might have whatever they have. So, you know, like y'all might want to quit with the crazy shit because um, that's not cool. But um, <clears throat> what else I want to say? But yeah, so anybody out there that might know my mom, Darlene Hall, you know what I'm saying? Originally Darlene, Darlene Harris, she went by B. Um, please, please, please hit my inbox. Any of her. Um, yeah, any of my mom's, uh, Darlene Hall, Darlene Harris, aka B. Anybody that might know my mom, please, please, please inbox me. If you went to school with her. Um, you know, inbox me. I just, you know, I just really want to know about my mom. I want to know a different perspective outside of my family's perspective. Um, you know, I really want to know the woman that my mom was outside of my perspective and my family's perspective. Um... But yeah, you know, I'm not going to, this ain't going to be a real long video, you know, and I know, um, not calling nobody out or nothing like that. I'm just expressing how I feel right now at this moment. You know, it's just like a journal. 
like a page into my diary. Um, but definitely got a lot of questions. What's up, sis? What's the business? How you doing? How's your healing going? Hey, Auntie K. Hey, Miss K. Uh, no, she's not alive, Miss K. Um, my mom has been deceased for... It's been about um, 30 years. And good to see you too, Miss K. And basically, Miss K, you know, I feel like there was a wrongful death when it came to my mom. And her not no longer being here, uh, I think that some family members had something to do with it. And, you know, dealing with some molestation, uh, things that happened. So some childhood trauma. And, you know, basically I'm just trying to uh, put some pieces together to my story. They're telling me if my arm doesn't do any better after physical therapy, they'll have to do another skin grab. Oh, wow. Damn. How's your leg? I hope they don't have to do that again. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Wow, the skin is too tight. I thought that was a good thing. How can it be too tight? But that's good. Your leg is doing good. Poor arm. But, you know, um, the physical part is that my mom is no longer here and that there could have been some foul play in her death. The spiritual part is a whole nother thing. Like, yeah, amen. Amen, Miss K. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And thank you so much. And I inbox you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. It's restricting you from stretching. Dang. That's, yeah, that's tight. Um, girl, he's over here curled up like a baby sleep. He's curled up. I'm surprised he ain't rose up, but he's curled up like a baby. Um, what was I saying? I was about to say, oh, the spiritual aspect of it is like, you know, when my mom first died, like, I'm telling you, like, spiritually, like, her spirit was so, it was so heavy, you know? And it was, what's the word? What's the word? Um, I don't know. It was just a lot of hurt. You know what I'm saying? It was a very, very, very hurt spirit. I'm not going to say a wounded spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because they say, you know, who can bear a wounded spirit? But it was a really, really hurt spirit. And um, it was very um, persistent as far as, you know, getting me to, you know, see, um, getting me to see her side of the story. 
like she had been cheated and robbed from her side of the story and she had been cheated out of life so it was a it was, you know my mom had the spirit of being cheated and robbed and it was very hurt a hurt spirit and i had to deal with that like all the time all the time when she first passed away it was like heavy 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 everywhere i would go you know i will like you know kind of feel this spirit and um you know um you know i'm not the one that's you know into all the ghosts and all that stuff or whatever but you know i do have a relationship with the most high and I can just go off of my intuition and how I felt at the time as far as how I was um, experiencing the aftermath of the death of my mom. And that's the spirit that it was given. It was given a really hurt and like it was cheated and robbed spirit. And that, um, you know, um, they had an unfinished story that needed to be told. And... Um, You know, like, my mom and I, we had a really, really close relationship. Um, I would be with her um, a lot. She would take me a lot of places with her. You know, I've seen the good, bad, and the, you know, everything in between as far as um, with my mom. Um, now, she was never, like, just open with her addiction with me or anything like that. Like, I never really seen her openly uh, do drugs. But I have, you know, I was around, you know, sometimes when she felt weak. And I could tell when my mom's um, essence would be changed, uh, would change, for lack of better words. And um, I, I, I knew when... You know, she would shift. Um, my mom was very honest and open with me about her drug addic addiction. You know, she would always say, um, you know, her lupus, she would be in so much pain from the disease that, you know, that was the only thing that really would ease the pain. Um, I remember when my mom, from my point of view and what my observation was i remember when my mom changed from not doing drugs to doing drugs so i know i've i've seen both you know and um you know for me no matter what anybody say she was a phenomenal person both ways and I might be a little biased, you know, because that is my mom, you know. But when before my mom started doing drugs, my mom was a force to be reckoned with. You know what I'm saying? She was very easy on the eye. She was very shapely, you know. She she had curves and stuff, and she had a really neat, neat shape. She dressed really nice. She had really pretty hair, pretty teeth chocolate you know my mama had it going on like we couldn't walk down the street without my mama getting a holler a whistle or something <laughs> my mama was a bad mama jama you know i'm not even gonna lie in my eyes and like i said i'm biased that's my that's that's my mom but in my eyes she was the most beautiful woman i had ever seen like for real like i was you know in a pure way you know in love with my mom i love my mom like you know straight up like she could have on a t-shirt and some sweatpants you know what i'm saying to me she was still her you know she was very smart very intelligent uh very outgoing uh charismatic and you know she just had it going on. And so, yeah, so I do remember my mom before she started doing drugs. I do remember my mom before she really, really, really took sick with the disease lupus. Um, 
Matter of fact, when she first told us, me and my brother, that she had lupus, from my recollection, or lation, or however you say it, um, we were living at, um, you know, me, my our predators, you know, we were living with him and my mom at the time when she told us that she had lupus. And at the time, um, you know, she was just saying, um, and that was right before she left my, right after she left my dad. And she was just so, you know, adamant about being a great mom and going to school and working and not letting the disease stop her from being, you know, a great mom to us. That was her mission. And so that's what that's what she was on at that time. So, you know, for anybody that, you know, was thinking that my mom was on drugs when we got molested, from my knowledge and from my memory, no, she was not. Um I think that my mom was possibly dating Alonzo before she started dating my dad. That's what I think. I think that when my dad came along, you know what I'm saying, he was like, you know, he Romeo, my mama, and she was kind of swept off of her feet. I think that Alonzo didn't like that. I think that when my mom left my dad, after she they got married, after she had Anshe, after she had me, and she ended up leaving my dad, I don't know why she left him. She left him on the military base, okay? And came back to Florida. We went, me and my brother, we went to New York for a brief period of time and stayed with uh, my dad's mom. And then, <clears throat> Shortly after that, my mom sent for us, came back and got us, and brought us to Florida. From my memory, we moved in with my grandma. It was too much going on. My grandma, my mama was like, no, I can't do this. I can't take care of my children and, you know what I'm saying, clean up after grown folks. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So we left. Boom. We went to Alonzo's. I think my mom and Alonzo hooked back up reconciled and started dating again being that he was in law enforcement i felt like my mom felt like that was um you know uh, a provider and a protector um i think for sure that my dad and alonzo knew each other um I think that they were working with each other somehow, some way. They was connected to each other, but they didn't like each other because of my mama. I think that when he did those foul things to us, my um, to me and my brother, I think that it was uh, what they call it, a vendetta. I think that it was get back. I think that it was um, revenge. I think that me and my brother were casualty of war. Um, you know, like my dad said, there's no such thing as a fair fight. So I think that we were a casualty of war. Right, definitely didn't get the closure that I needed, Camille, and that's and thus you know that's why I'm here. Yeah, I was thinking but the I've, same thing, Camille. It's a shame that she's forty one years forty one years old, <laughs> Camille, and thing. she got to guess and think, you know, when she got a whole family. You know, like lately we've been uh, 
contacting other family members to find out about, maybe, maybe even potentially schoolmates, just to find out about Miss Darlene. You know, when she got a whole family So, yeah, um, you know, those are just my thoughts of what happened. Let me ask you, though, why do you think they try to paint a picture? I, I don't really tell you about who she is, because when we hear about other people, when we hear strangers and other people talk about it, it's, it's a totally different narrative. That's what, that's what perplexes me, how strangers and other people can speak about her in a way but it's like to a real close personal family crickets. And this is her daughter. <laughs> and, you know, it perplexes me. No pictures up. No, you know, I, I don't want to go around in a circle, but it's just, to me, that, you know, that hurt. <coughs> you know, my wife's 41 years old. That's my best friend. You know, it was deep to me that she never really, really talked about her mom. You know, I talk about my mama all the time. <laughs> I say something about my mama every day. <coughs> you know, I, I don't know, it's just deep for me. And, you know, and like I was resting, man. I, my wife said she's going to do a video on you. Know, I, I was resting, but I'm going to keep it real. It's like, that, re that wrestled my spirit up. I ain't here to get upset and talking. I ain't here to go through all that. But I just think that's really, really strange that she got to find out about her mama. Nobody's, I mean, the, the reality of it is, is that when she finally spoke up and said that that man molested her, didn't nobody act like they ain't know who it was. So if y'all ain't going to tell that truth, what other truths you not going to tell? You see what I'm saying? Like, that's a shame that my wife got to think, figure out, like it's some mystery. The mysterious Darlene. We're gonna keep it real. She was 16 or 15 or 16 years old. Living in Tallahassee, Florida. So what my wife would like to know is for those 16 years before she had on shape, maybe 17, 18 before she had some mirror. You know, what was Miss B like? Because y'all want to discredit those years. It seemed like the focus was on the aftermath. And then I'm trying to figure out what 27-year-old woman, 16 at the time, what 27-year-old woman gets the stamp, gets a negative stamp on her life when she never really had one? Who stamps a 27-year-old woman? <laughs> you feel me? Y'all stamped her. And that's what she's really not happy about. She definitely ain't happy about, happy about what happened to her daughter and her son. But to be 27 years old, to be 16 when he starts shoe showing her, that's pretty callous. That's some pretty callous... <laughs> You know, that's some pretty callous stuff, man. And callous means unfeeling. Because there's no way she should be 41 years old and ain't each one of y'all set her down and told her about her sister, her mom. Especially if she passed away early. Specifically if she passed away early. Now, if my wife ain't got no closure, that was done on purpose. That's where I have a problem. And we have to speculate, think this, think that. No, I think I know. I think I know. Because I wouldn't care what my mama did. I wouldn't care what my sister did. They could have did anything. But I'm telling you, on that nigga shit, y'all try to silence y'all sister, man. See, the thing about love is, love is a dog. And them eight years she gave her, her daughter, 
All she dogs them years out to the love. Man, I, we just watched Charlotte's Web. <laughs> that was my mom's man, let me favorite tell you something, movie. Man, boy, Mr. Ali was deep. Charlotte Wells was my mom's favorite movie. And man, there's so many metaphors in this movie. It's like she was, she watched the movie with Samira. And if you watch the movie, listen, look, you know, we watched it with the uh, subtitles on. And it's like she knew something was going to happen. And she implanted a movie <laughs> in my wife's memory. So that we watched it uh, yesterday, not the whole thing, but I was telling my wife, man, look at these similarities. What stood out to you? Just the, the theme behind the whole movie. It's about love. And it's might, you know, it might be a life might take a lot of twists and turns. It might not work out the way you want it. But if love was present, you never lost. And that's the thing. Y'all were too busy trying to hold on to a dollar or your image. And that's for the Howells and the Harrisons. Y'all allowed yourselves to miss out on love. Now, after all this time, I can see why. <laughs> after all this time and reflection on the on the situation, I can see why y'all hated her. Yeah, I said it. Because I don't care what my sister did. <laughs> For real, I still love my my sister did me foul. I still love her to this day. And if it came down to it, I'm not going to shake her name in the public. I'm not going to make her look bad to the public. And I'm definitely not going to keep from her children how special she may be, despite the fact that she made some bad decisions. Her picture's definitely going to be up. And I'm going to tell her children about the good parts of her and the bad parts, but I'm definitely not going to make it a mystery. That's cruel. So the only way that I think that people can be that cruel <laughs> is if you got something to hide or you're sh or ashamed. But I'm not ashamed. Like I said, I hope she did try to tell on all y'all. Every last one. Because if y'all didn't give a fuck none about her to the point where y'all ain't really care about her and her children, because y'all left them out there <laughs> just to get done dirty, y'all gonna try to say it's her fault. No, I think y'all sent the lines all over. Y'all obviously was cool with it because he was a power bird. And y'all ain't none of y'all told us that's not the right Alonzo. Only person said this was Lonche. Talking about, because we told him it was two Alonzo Johnson down here. One of them played professional football. The other one went to, uh, you know, to be a, in law enforcement. It ain't too much confusion about all that. One's five, six years older than the other. Live in a whole nother county. So if y'all gonna try that move right there, that trick no good. Or y'all could have told her that that's the Alonzo. Ain't nobody called. That's not the right Alonzo. You know, y'all, it's, it's just to me, you're guilty. You're guilty. And it shows. And the sad part about it to me is, you ain't got the decency to share who she really was to her daughter. <laughs> but that's okay. Because see, God always got a way of making a way out of no way. So like I said to my wife, you know, her schoolmates probably know her better than her family. So if God's going to give my wife the uh, closure, it's coming. But it's going to come at your expense. And you chose that a long time ago. And, you know, me and my wife have been talking, man. We're going to keep it real. You know, we're not judging nobody. But you better get your lives right with God. And I ain't talking about just her family. I'm talking about all of us. We stand in judgment right now. <laughs> so every move you make is critical. You know, you might not want to go out on that cheap night tonight. You might want to stay home with your children. You might not want to go get high tonight. 
You might want to stay home with your children. You might want to quit tricking. You might want to quit lying, stealing, cheating. Simple things. You might want to practice these things. Um, but yeah, you know, <clears throat> I think it's important for me to get closure too. Um, you know, my mom, she deserves justice. I just made a post the other day. I said, if in 2023, we still investigate in the murders of Tupac and Biggie, then who is anybody to tell me that I'm wrong for rewinding the tape and investigating the death of my mom? Can't nobody tell me nothing on that. Yeah, because the narrative was too funny, though. Like, it's like she died from lupus. She died from using drugs. She died from AIDS. Now, which one was it? <laughs> exactly. I, I'm confused. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It could it'd be smarter to say it was a combination of all of the above, but no, nah, we've heard from this side, from that side, from this. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like, and then my 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 theory is she may have passed away from being heartbroken. That's my theory. That's what our Rose said. And she may have had to pass away <laughs> to keep y'all operation going to this very day. When my wife said that y'all was living off blood money, I didn't really. When she said it the first time, I was like, man, what, babe, what are you talking about? That was, that was, that was a deep statement. Man, she wasn't lying. Y'all sacrificed her for your own good. <laughs> for real. And he pointed the thing at her and said she took herself out. Now, if that's the case, that's not nothing to be ashamed of. That's life. So you make sure you celebrate that person and honor that person for the good that they did do. Because ain't nobody been on this planet and get all bad. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That's life. But what you ain't going to do is bury her. Because she stood up and did the right thing. Y'all rather all y'all children and grandchildren <laughs> live a facade. And the one person that stood up to do the right thing, y'all could have honored that. Maybe saved y'all souls. For real. That's a heartless, soulless. That's heartless, man. To have her believing that her mama just, you know, tricked her life away. Basically, we, I'm saying, baby, ain't that pretty much had kind of the narrative? She tricked her life off? Mm-hmm. Now, I won't tell the whole story, though. Cause, and the reason why is because y'all never told her nothing about her mama for real. <laughs> I don't understand that. So, you know, we'd like to know about her mom. Anybody who won't tell the truth, anybody who's interested in, you know, Ain't worried about the halls or the hearses like that, you know. Because God's looking. And he sees who's holding secrets and keeping secrets. He sees who's willing to talk who ain't. And he sees who's trying to be sneaky and act like they're going to, you know, get close to us or separate us or attack us. Sees all that. See, y'all still fighting with that old technology and devices and stuff, which y'all don't realize is that God's people are really fighting with the help of God. <laughs> like, seriously. You know what I'm saying? That's what you gain when you walk a righteous life along with the Most High. Is you gain wisdom. You gain favor. You gain intuition. So all them funny, you know, things that y'all trying to do. That shit y'all been doing through technology and devices and all that shit. What does the Bible say about devices? Devices are a man's heart. <laughs> so y'all, 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 y'all kind of behind right there. 
Yeah, y'all ain't behind. Y'all way behind. For real. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody fighting like that no more. You know what I'm saying? God's people has God's favor. So, you know, that's spiritual warfare. Yeah, y'all ain't ready for that. Because y'all still worshiping idols. <laughs> y'all idol worshiping. And I don't know, you know, for the house, you know, I know y'all probably get a little agitated and irritated when I talk about all the Masonic shit and all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You feel me? I'm just, you know, speaking on it because I've been hearing about the shit for so long, you know, and it's just like, I don't really know, you know, that's not my lane. However, I'm trying to figure out how has it been positively effective in our lineage and heritage like how is that how is it really um helping us for real i, I want to know because last time i checked you know we are our family history is full of lies and secrets you know and it's like damn it's like you know y'all do what y'all do but y'all don't understand what y'all do and what y'all done has affected us, the next um, generation. Or um, maybe y'all do. Maybe y'all do know that. I think you do. In a negative way. Yeah, y'all sacrificing y'all family. And it's like, damn, is that what y'all do? Y'all sacrifice y'all children. Y'all sacrifice people. y'all children and people so y'all can have status. That's crazy. Y'all sacrifice I hope people. to God that's not true. I'm going to say it. God tell me to say it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to say it. You know, even, I'm not just pointing the finger at your family. I'm saying everybody, including myself. If you wrong, you wrong. And you're wrong. <laughs> you're dead wrong. you dead wrong. And you know, the, what I love about my wife is that she still got compassion for y'all. That's why I love her. Like, I don't care what she do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anybody that still care about people that willfully and wrongfully persecute them, got to have love in their heart. But where they got me fucked up is I don't trust them. You know what I'm saying? The love is there. You know, I, the compassion is still there. Like, you know, I don't hate y'all, but when I don't trust you, you know, it's like we don't really have a relationship. We don't have a, a a solid foundation for the relationship because I can only talk to you on a surface level. And I feel like, you know, if I turn my back, you know what I'm saying? First of all, I'm already naturally like that because of what happened to my mom, <clears throat> okay? And if anybody don't understand that, then oh well. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, like, I don't, you know, with the house, like, I feel paranoid. You know what I'm saying? Even with the Harris's. Like, I feel paranoid. I feel like, you know, I really can't trust y'all. You know, I really feel like, um, I, I really feel like until I heal, I wouldn't know how to until heal. I heal, I really don't even want to be around nobody. I, I like, I don't want to, I don't want no, I don't want no visitors. Or anything, because right now I feel like I cannot trust anybody but my husband. Like seriously, man. And I trust God. I put God first in my life. I'm not having her trust in me. She's trusting in the God in me. And the God in me. That's how you know we do that. I know y'all felt that. I felt it. Woo! We. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I in trouble, boy. It's a lot. Cause, hey, look, cause, a, cause, a, cause, a serious, the, on a serious note, you know what I'm saying? My husband has added to my life. He's added to um, my protection and you know my ability to be able to trust. I'm still learning, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he's earned it. And before my husband came along, you know what I'm saying? I know I was using the God in me too. You feel me? So, you know, he added 
he, he added God. Like, he really, really manif helped manifest God so I could see God clearly. But I don't want to... I don't want to feel like I can't trust y'all. I have to, you know, I have to make sure you ain't trying to stab me in the back because you're trying to fight for a position in the... <laughs> No, I don't, I just don't want to be around it, man. Like, I just, I don't, like, I need to heal. Shit, I'm fucked up. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, no, yeah, no, yeah. I'm saying, like, like I'm not, yeah, I'm reconstruction. in reconstruction. Yeah, reconstruction. It's like I mean, a house, it's like a home that has uh, still got a solid foundation. Yes. But it needs repairs, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's still a home, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's messed up. It's still a home. It's definitely not messed up. However, I can't afford to have people around me that I feel like I can't trust or, you know, it's going to knock my head off for a position or it was, you know, keeping an eye on me for somebody else. Like, I just don't want to be around that shit, man. I just don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, we got two small children to raise. We got four small children to raise, actually. But we have two babies. And, you know, the capacity that they had you in was like this glorified babysitter for adults. You see what I'm saying? And when people don't want to accept their place in life, you know, like, my thing is, is if you're getting the same results over and over again and you keep doing the same things or worse, they call that insanity. And it feels like, um, you know, being in judgment and revelation, you know, it seems like a lot of people are stuck on what whatever whatever time they was on. That's, you know, that's what they having to ride out with. And that's cool. Like, if that's what you want to do, if that's the direction you take in your life. But I don't want to be a casualty of anybody's war <laughs> or any of that. Like. No. Mm -mm. Won't be a part of nobody's mission or none of that. Right. And most men in my position, most men in my position, I ain't gonna say men, most guys in my position definitely wouldn't have spoke up and said nothing. That's true. Either or, they'd have, been, they'd have been scared to say something, or they would have wanted some of that money. And once again, I don't want too money, boy. I don't want nothing from you. I was going to take a job with you. I wasn't going to work for you. I was going to work with you. <laughs> I don't work for nobody. But the most high, and that's a somebody. The most high actually exists now, outside of religion. <laughs> The Most High actually, he exists, or she exists, or whatever it is, and it don't like ugly. And if you can't look in the mirror and tell that you're ugly, that you're pointing your life in the wrong direction, and instead of manning up, or womaning up, you copping out, or trying to play both sides of the fence. You know, what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to get nobody to choose or anything like yeah. that. Like, do you, you know, yeah, do you, yeah, don't do us with you, yeah, and that's not even being disrespectful, that's being out of love. Because, right through here, man, you know, if you're in the valley of indecision and we don't walk you through the valley of the shadow of death and you decide to stay in there, you can't get mad because we keep walking <clears throat> or get mad because we keep walking, but we're not gonna stay in there with you. The valley of indecision is a very dangerous place to be. So yeah, like I'm not mad at nobody. I don't want nobody to choose. You know, I'm not trying to. So we're gonna make the choice easy for everybody. If you, don't, if you don't come around, if you ain't coming around here unless you, uh, you know, really, 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 seriously working with the Most High. And we got to see that in your life. It's got to be reflected. Because action speaks louder than words. 
and words run dry. <laughs> words run short. You, you can only say so many words. A person's going to do what they're going to do. Now, I respect everybody for whatever decision you make, but you got to respect me for how I react to it. I ain't down for those secrets. Secrets kill. And if anybody knows that, it's me. So, yeah. Uh, I'm about to get off of here. My battery's about to go dead. But, yeah, that's where we at. You know, generational curse breaking part eight. You know, this is life update. And this is where we at today with it. Yeah, we doing this for the children. We doing this for not just our children, but for y'all's as well. Somebody got to stand up. Somebody got to set the precedent. And it's a shame. All you influential people are not able to do it. <laughs> not one of y'all said, here, I don't want none of this, Lord. Take all this, Lord. Please have mercy and grace on my children and grandchildren. I'm looking forward to that day where somebody stand up and be a man and put all that worldly stuff down that the devil gave you. Set the precedent. Or a woman. You know. Um, you know, that's my hope. <clears throat> you know, my wife, if my wife would be totally transparent, she will tell y'all from the very beginning, I have held out hope for all of y'all. <laughs> have, have I not, babe, have I not prayed for each one of them and said, God, do something, help them do something different. Yeah. Help them tell the truth. Yeah. So I don't hate you at all. Because the reality of it is, is being that you are her father, you know what I'm saying, you put her on this planet. So I'm going to tell you thank you. But I'm not going to honor you, bro. Because you do not respect or care for your daughter like you should. And that ain't my own personal opinion. That's her opinion. And she's my wife. So as long as she has that opinion, you better go to church <laughs> on the next day and confess. Show people that you really a man. For real. And let's see how this rides. Let's ride it out. That's what a man does. If he gets into a fight, he takes his ass whooping. You don't run and hide behind other people, man, and point the finger. Your judgment day is coming, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's actually on you already. Like I said, I try to pray for you. So whether you think I try to pray on you or not, you know what I'm saying, you was mistaken. I told you from the very beginning, I ain't want nothing from you, and I meant it. And you might want to take a look at all the people that don't want nothing from you in your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might want to take a look at all the people that don't want nothing from you in your life. And you need to thank them. Starting with me. Ms. Linda said, you're right. Actions speak louder than words and secrets kill relationships sooner or later. When stuff gets found out and the shit hits the fan, it's often covered up by more lies. As they say, the truth hurts. Yeah. And it's so funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't help but think about, like, you know, principles and stuff that my dad taught me. And he taught me, he said, you know. He said, don't lie, just always tell the truth, because when you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie, and another lie, and another lie, and another lie. You feel me? So it's like, you know, I'm like really, really, as a daughter, taking in what my dad is teaching me, because I'm honoring him, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm listening. I'm being obedient. And this is where that's led me to. And it's like, damn, dad, I have to tell the truth. But you get to lie? <laughs> but I have to tell the truth. Or do I just need to tell the truth to him? <laughs> to you. To you, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't I didn't know it worked like that. So honestly, like, I'm just doing what you taught me, and that was to tell the truth. And that's why, thus, the videos that we've been putting out has been consistent. Like, it's been consistent. It was easy because y'all was lying. You definitely was lying. You know, what, what was so deep is that, <laughs> like when you and Samara had came to an understanding that y'all was going to have a conversation, you know, you waited till you left. You know, you, matter of fact, you bring it. <laughs> and then you get on a Zoom call with her, and you ain't even all the way on the screen. You peeking in and out of the screen. Like you doing something else. It was FaceTime. Huh? I think it was FaceTime. Or oh, whatever. Like you was busy doing something else. Like, <laughs> well, really what it was, like it was a little boy. It was a little bitty child that was peeking in and out of, on, the, on the video. It was just the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's never, true, Miss Linda. I've never seen nothing like it. She said, yep, yeah, you don't have to remember the truth. When you tell lies, you can't remember what you said. Right. You know, that's like when I asked my dad, like, why didn't mom, why didn't mommy leave? And at first, what did he, what he, did he know? didn't know. He did, first he said he didn't know. So he couldn't remember. He didn't know. Well, he then couldn't he remember. And then I said, oh, was it Job Corps? He said, oh, yeah, that's right. It was Job Corps. Well, that was and, <laughs> and then, no, nah, I'm saying that oh, night, yeah. that's what he said. And then the next day, he said, he told you the story about how she fucked around on him and all that. Maybe you could have said that immediately. Or maybe while she was growing up <laughs> with you. You're going to wait to the, to the coals on the fire. <clears throat> then you don't even have the answer. And then you give the answer later. Like you could have said that straight up. See, that's the problem Miss Darlene had with you. You ain't straight up. And then my wife said, you know, the, the legacy of the halls and the, the halls in Atlanta. I didn't even know what the legacy was going to be. I thought she was going to talk about y'all daddy. When, but when she said that y'all front, oh, man, she hit the nail right on the head. Boom. Especially when I found out she was working with another nigga's money in your pocket. So what we ain't gonna do is play this game like you just, you know, gonna slide on through like Puff that is <laughs> on the murder of Tupac. <laughs> Cause your money's long. Nah, bro. Allegedly they said he has something to do with Tupac and Biggie. Allegedly. Yeah. Puffy, I don't know. Puffy ain't gonna get out of this no more than you are. The only way out of this is to tell the truth. That's the only way out. And then you don't got no faith in God for real. Because if you really did have faith in God, you know you had a nice long run. <laughs> Even if you did have to do day for day of some hard time, you've already had a good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You already had a good time. So you're going to take it to your grave. A good time. When you could turn your life around, set the precedence for your children and your grandchildren and your family. To turn to the most high. And the only way we're going to believe that, Mr. Hop, a rich man asked the Lord, I want to make it to the kingdom. And the Lord said, hey, go sell everything you got. Go give it up. He said, man, I can't do that. But you know what, babe? The crazy thing about it is, like, before it even got to this point, like, if Dad would have told me the truth, like, I would have just kept that between us. You feel me? And we maybe we could have 
Maybe we could have moved on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, could have got some help. Yeah, we could have got, got some therapy, man. He we could have got see, some therapy. See, instead of you being 41 getting some ther- therapy and him being 60 or something and getting some therapy, y'all could have got some therapy a long time ago because you was brave enough to say something. We're going to keep it real. You were brave enough to say something. Your mom was brave enough to say something. She said no. <laughs> you didn't participate. Now, they can come up with all those small examples they want, but hell, you was their family member. But when it was ultimately said and done, you did not participate. So your family could have got help a long time ago. And we too busy trying to be like society, man. You know, God, look, God ain't, you know, I'm not going to say white people. <laughs> we too busy trying to be bad people. You know, we want to be able to... to to date who we want. We want to be able to do what we want to do. We want to do what we want to do rather than do what we're supposed to do. You know, it's a funny thing. My mom kept telling me, she said, boy, you're cutting yourself off from a lot of things in your life because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You do what you're supposed to do, the whole world opens up to you. But you do what you want to do, you focus on one small thing, and that gives you tunnel vision. But God said, I ain't going to excuse you because you got tunnel vision. <laughs> I'm not going to just say, okay, he's just focused. Because what you're supposed to be focused on is God and your family. And if that's the case, you don't need a dollar. So you hold on. because you, As you hold on to that dollar, you're telling us everything we need to know. Because if it was me about the love of a woman that really loved me and a daughter of the love of a daughter that really loved me, Man, I'm letting that dollar go. Bye. That's a no-brainer, especially if they give you one last chance. Woo! How many, how many people would love in the history of mankind, how many people would love to have had one more time with a person that loved them, despite the fact that they willfully persecuted them? I think that's a gift. That's truly a gift. And you throw that away, you'll look a gift horse in the mouth. A gift horse in the mouth. So yeah, you know, you know, my question would be, why did y'all, you know, why did y'all have to get rid of my mom? Like, what was, what was that about? Like, why was that the mission? Why was the operation get B out of the way? That was you, cause, cause you was promising her shit. You know what I'm saying? promising her change or like why if she gave you a divorce why did you still have to get her out of the way I guess, you know, if she wasn't uh, conducive to your lifestyle, you know, then that, I guess that would make sense. You know, if she didn't fit into your imagery, I guess that would make sense. I don't know, you know, I'm just... trying to answer my own questions because I might not ever get the answers to these questions. You know, I hope I do, though. I know you will. I hope I do. I and know you will. It's an absolute guarantee. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, when you say that like that, I understand. I understand. But just know this. The truth always comes out 
It always comes out. Especially when you're looking for it. And that was, that's what y'all wasn't looking for. The love between a mother and a daughter. Y'all wasn't looking for that. That slid right past y'all. Come out in the form of a movie. Charlotte's Web. That's deep, man, how God can use people, places, and things to solidify connections. Because what God don't like is ugly. And the way y'all move is extremely ugly. So know that you're going to be exposed. Know that. Know that. Because if we hope, you know, that it comes out, you know, whatever, that gives you a thought in your head that you can still do you. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it's over for that. Mm -hmm. It's over for that. Yeah, I know God's going to grant us the desire of our hearts because we live righteously. You know? And I believe that wholeheartedly. So, you know, really, that hope that I really have is that y'all can change yeah, and do something that's, different. The right that's the way. hope. You feel me? But I know that God's going to grant us the desires of our hearts. It's, it's written. And it's a promise. And all we have to do is do what we're supposed to do. I keep on with the devices and the technology and the snake shit. Um, and keeping your distance and, and all that, you know. But at the end of the day, you can't stop God's will. Can't stop it. My mom didn't deserve that. Me and my brother, we didn't deserve that. Um, that is it's like you get to just live your life, though. You know what I'm saying? And not even concerned about how it affect the people closest to you. You, you don't have to tell the truth. But then you deserve the truth. It's like... Like, none of that shit even makes sense. For real. And that's what happens. <laughs> that's what it happens. It don't make you, sense. That's what happens, man, when you live the way you live. You, you're the author of confusion. That's what it is. And by now, you don't even know the truth. That's the bad thing about not telling the truth. Like they say, you have to tell a lie, then another lie, then another lie, then another lie, and then that's when delusion takes place. See? I bet there's a fine line between not telling the truth <laughs> and delusion. It ain't nothing worse than a delusional motherfucker with a lot of money. Because that makes everybody around them equally delusional. So, yeah, life update, generational curse breaking, like, you know. If you ain't ready to grow up for real, man, if you ain't ready to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? This ain't the church of the right thing over here. It's like, this ain't the church to do the right thing over here. This is not a church. This is not a religion. We have a close personal relationship with the most high. And it's not a game over here, you know. So, for your own protection, don't, I wouldn't come around if I didn't mean it. For real, it goes to everybody. I wouldn't come around if, if I didn't mean it. Yeah. If you mean it, come on. If you mean it, come on. You're more than welcome. But if you don't mean it, please. Yeah, it's not a good thing, bro. Because I'm telling you, like, the energy that I have right now is probably just enough for the people that's in this house. For real. Like, that's all the energy. And then, you know what I'm dedicating my other regularly scheduled program to. But other than that, I don't have the energy. I just don't. 
you know, like, uh, for instance, like, when you have one child and you're so young and, you know what I mean, like, just vibrant and energetic, and then 10 years later, it's like you're a whole different... <laughs> You know, you might still have energy and still, you know, be kind of vibrant, but not quite like you was 10 years ago when you had the first one. You know what I'm saying? So basically, I'm using that as an analogy to say that I don't have the energy anymore to deal with like anything, other anything than outside. Real. Yeah. Because it, here's the thing. If if you being being that you're being real, then it's not gonna take energy from us. Right. That's just logical. Being that you're being about if you're willing to do something different and the right thing, we're gonna give each other energy. We're gonna fill each other's cup. You know what I'm saying? But I don't even really wanna educate them like that, you feel me? Because I want them to keep moving the way they've been moving. Keep just you know reveal yourself. <laughs> Let me get to know you. <laughs> so yeah, because every time we try to speak some real shit, y'all won't use it. I don't know. I don't know if y'all using it as tactics to you know y'all play on emotions. It's like blood sucking, energy sucking, energy draining, and you know like I said, like you know we don't have that type of energy over here. Cause that energy can be going somewhere else and that's what you know that's what um people who are like really really living for this world and in this world don't understand you know it's just something they can't they can't understand and i and i'm not mad at them for that but you can't serve two gods you're going to betray one of them. And you ain't got to serve my God. Because my God ain't going to be your God. That's that's where people got it mixed up. At. Like what I think when, what we got in society today is people who want to make their own choices. Like pretty much, that's pretty much what's going on individually, e even amongst groups. Individually, people want mm -hmm. the right to make their own choice. That makes sense, but it don't make happy. It doesn't make a healthy family. Every you can't do whatever you want to do. You can't just do whatever you want to do. As a child, you, you come to understand that as a small child, you can't just touch fire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, some people can't, but most people can't. You can't just touch fire. You can't just take the next person's cookie. These are things you learn. You know, these are things you learn, you know, simple things you learn growing up. So you cannot do <laughs> whatever you want to do. Yeah, That's not how life works. Because there's universal laws. So what y'all doing is y'all doing what y'all want to do, but then making everybody else follow the rules. Mm -hmm. See, that's called, what's it called? Manipulation. Yeah, but it's, it's got a scientific name, you know, a therapeutic name. It's called... Uh, Deception. Border, no, it's called borderline <laughs> personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder. And what that means is, as long as somebody's telling you yeah, or agreeing with you, are you good? But the minute they tell you no, well, you better watch for your life. Yeah, that's a real serious psychosis. <laughs> for real. As long as you feed their ego, you good. Boy, but the minute you cross them, make them feel like any kind of way other than you rolling with them, they'll kill you. They'll kill you with their mind. They'll kill you with their words. They'll kill you with the actions. Hey, man, they'll kill you. So what I've been thinking, though, just keep it real. I'm going to give 
everybody a heads up, you know. Quite possibly, a lot of y'all possessed. And we can see it in your behavior. So you're not even really making your own decisions. <laughs> That's the sad part. It's like you're not really in control. Because if you was, you see straight through the lies and delusion and the devil's tricks. Because God's telling you all you got to do is repent. All you got to do is atone, redeem. That's all you got to do. The world can't punish you. You better be worried about the one that can take your soul. Exactly. The world cannot punish you. You cannot, you're the only one that can punish you. Like seriously. If you still got breath in you right now, you still have the ability to do something different. But because you won't, you want to be punished. Because a real punishment is doing wrong and getting away with it. <laughs> that's a horrible punishment. Doing wrong and getting away with it, that's a punishment. But they tell me that uh, in Revelations, in, in, in the Revelations of the Bible, it says that uh, in these days, these demons are going to be hungry. You see what I'm saying? They hear it. And they need hosts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, uh, they got us thinking that these uh, demons or aliens, they look like a, you know, a extra terrestrial or whatever, but no, uh, some of them look really human. <laughs> In my opinion. You know. So, no, that's that. I'm about to get on up off of here. Um, almost 12 o'clock. It's time to read the word. Yeah. That's deep. The video ended, and that's time for us to talk to God. Like, seriously, that's what we do. We're not talking about God, we talk to God. <laughs> you feel Talk to God and walk with God. So God told me to tell y'all, man, stay far away if you don't mean it. For real. That's out of love, man. That's not no hate. That's out of love, man. If you mean it, come on. But if you don't, man, stay far away. Because my, my mind is really, you know, uh, under reconstruction. And, you know, I just have to be very conscious about who is allowed in our space. Who she shares her energy with. Yeah. Uh, Y'all like to play games, man. And, and we got children. So if she's gonna be giving up energy, it's gonna be to her children. And her husband. Who really cares about her. Has proven that. So, you know, that's the natural order of things. That's how it's really supposed to go. So we ain't telling y'all about yourselves not leaving it out. We're showing you the out. We're showing you the way out. But you don't want it. Yeah, we're about to go ahead and get into the word. It's about to be a new day. This has been another generational curse breaking video, part eight. Life's update. And, you know, we put it all on the table. This is where we're at today. On Monday, Monday, October the 16th, 2023. If it's two, I don't know, I just woke up. If it's today's Tuesday, today's Monday. Yeah. At 12 o'clock, it'll be Tuesday, right? So, 12 o'clock, it'll be Tuesday. So, today's the 16th? Today is the 16th before 12 o'clock, yes. And then it'll be 17th after 12 o'clock. After, after 12 o'clock, it'll be 17th Tuesday, October 16th, 2023. Oh, yeah, son. Yeah. Yeah, he's still alive. 
We celebrating real milestones. He's still alive and kicking. Our son is about to be two months. Thank you, Lord. For real. Countdown. And um, we He's thankful. Still alive. We're grateful. We're very grateful for him. Thank you, Lord. He's changed us. It's about a whole new dynamic to the whole house, and we love him. And he's a bundle of joy, and we love y'all too. And thank y'all for, uh, you know, following our journey, man, and, and um, listening to our story. We're going to continue to share, but right now, we're about to get off of here. Once again, we appreciate y'all and good night. And remember, optimal health is wealth. Peace.